Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, it's Sunday but also international break and during international break as we can't speak about the games, match analysis, tactical analysis, Allegri in, Allegri out, well what are we speaking about? You can speak mainly about two things, the first one is the trial, the process, minus 15 salary maneuvers and we will not speak about that today because the papers, especially the one that wants to speak bad about Juventus, they are already taking care about that but we can speak about something that is exciting exciting the fans a lot. Mercato, you know, Mercato is crazy, Mercato never sleeps, so let's speak about Mercato. Of course, before starting to speak about it, you have to know, as I repeated so many times on the channel, that we can't do Mercato officially at the moment. Why? Because we don't know what competition Juventus will be. Will we be in Champions League, in Europa League? Will we be out of the European competitions? So at the moment we are blocked. But that doesn't mean that Juventus can't start to make a list, an A list, a B list, a C list. We can have some players there. What do we do? Who are we observing? So that we are ready, anticipating the moment so that when we know about the trial, we are ready to go full power on the market. Market. Today, we'll not speak that much about the new names that can potentially go in, but analyzing the players that we have in our team at the moment. And we will focus on the offensive players, Vlaovic, Chiesa, Di Maria, Moiskin, Sule, and so on, who is risking to leave, who can potentially stay, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, and we will try to do the work of Juve in today's video. Guys, if you want to support the channel, and you know what happened a few days ago, if you really want to support the channel, don't forget, I really ask you as a favor, put a maximum of like, subscribe to the channel if you didn't yet, we start. We'll speak about the offensive players of Juve, but before that, just a side news, the one of the sporting director, because you know that that's a hot topic at Juventus, well, the new name that entered yesterday and also today was on the papers is Andrea Berta. Who is Andrea Berta? The sporting director of Atletico Madrid since 2013. He's an Italian one. He is 51 years old. He came from Genoa and Parma. Has already some teams in his curriculum vitae. It's a sporting director that actually was in the target of Juventus the day before the old board of directors resigned. Why? Because he sent a video message to a congress that Juventus organized speaking about the next-gen project where he spoke really well. And Juventus went like, wow, this guy, he knows what he's speaking about. He is already in a big team, he has a winning mentality, he's one that always showed that he's able to do a mercato that is self-sustainable, he's also one that brings value to the youth, especially speaking about that next-gen project, you know it in Spain, they have a culture of working with youth, working with second teams, in Italy we have only one team and it's Juventus, so they are saying, guys, this guy, he has a lot of skills that could potentially bring value to Juventus. So Andrea Berta, Atletico Madrid, in the future, we will speak about him more and more and more, but it's one that you have to keep in mind. What about our players? What about our offensive, offensive players? Who can stay, who can leave? Well, we start immediately with Dusan Vlaovic. Dusan Vlaovic that has a salary of 40 million euro gross. That means 7.5 net. 80 million, it's the value that he has on the market. And the positive things and the negatives of Vlaovic, we will go through them now. What is the positive of Dusan Vlaovic? Well, the age, he's 23 years old. He's a player that is young. What else? He has a huge potential. A lot of us are speaking like Dusan Vlaovic, that he's a potential phenomenon. One of the top three, top five strikers of the world. Even if at Juventus he was not able to show it yet, we know about the huge potential. Every time that we are thinking that he might leave, we are scared, Juventini that Dusan Vlaovic can become a top striker in another team. So we know the potential. One other skill is the fact that he sees the goal. He is clinical. He knows how to score with his left, with his right, with his header. It's a player that feels the goal. He's living for the goal. The weaknesses of Dusan Vlaovic are the fact that he's already at a roof salary. So we know that Dusan Vlaovic can't stay 10 years at Juventus because the roof salary has been set and he's already there at a very young age. If we want to re negotiate in the future for extending his contract, it will be extremely difficult to go over what he's already earning today. The growing pain is a big question mark because growing pain is an annoying one, will always come back. It can go away for a certain period, but it can co come back. And if it's something 
that is annoying you in the way that you are playing growing pain is a big question mark well the ratio at the moment the ratio of the price that we played so in terms of quantity versus the quality that is offering at the moment at juventus is at big doubt a lot of players are speaking about his first ball control the fact that he can't play that much isolated in front of the goal but also can he handle the pressure yes or no these are the strengths and the weaknesses of Dusan Vlaovic Dusan Vlaovic he has a 75% of sting at Juventus quite high but we have to pay attention because Dusan Vlaovic because of all the weaknesses because of the fact that he can bring you a lot of money in entry and is observed by teams like Bayern Munich like Paris Saint-Germain like Real Madrid like teams in Premier League like Tottenham Arsenal and so on the offers are there and if an incredible offer can come for Dusan Vlaovic Juventus can potentially think especially if he is asking for it to sell Dusan Vlaovic so attention I want your comments about Dusan in the video we go to the second one Federico Chiesa the plus and the minus well it's a player that has gross 10 million salary so 5 net there is some margin to renegotiate in the future if he stays 60 million is the value at the moment even after his uh, injury well he is a symbol of Juve already today and a lot of people when thinking about Juventus Federico Chiesa is the one that comes up in your mind first the other teams when they are speaking about Juventus potentially Mercato to fish some players from our team well they are speaking about Dujan Vlaovic but especially about Federico Chiesa he can use his right foot his left foot he can play on the right he can play on the left he can play multiple position Federico Chiesa is a real asset but also he is Italian which is super important for Juventus when we are speaking about youth project about sustainability about Italian core about Juventus Tinita, well he has all these elements in his favors Federico Chiesa the weaknesses well there is one we don't know about the ACL recovery he recovered now he had that these small problems will he recover 100% one day after ACL is always a big question mark and that's the only weakness what are the percentages of him to stay at Juventus next year 95% no doubts about Federico staying while because, because we know that he wants to take revenge he wants to repace the fans but also the club he said it himself so Federico Chiesa 95% of stay what about Milik well Arkadiusz Milik the positive cheap deal super cheap deal low salary and that's fantastic the impact that he brought to Juventus because nobody was believing in him he came he gave an impact he already scored eight official goals I want to say he scored nine I don't forget the Salernitana 3-2 the maturity of the players accepting to be on the bench accepting to be a starter being able to play as a isolated only striker number one but also as a second striker behind Dusan Vlaovic or Milik or whatever he's a player that is versatile what are the problems the weaknesses of uh, Milik well international appeal it's a bit lower of course but especially the repetitive small injuries he has no big injuries but repetitive small ones so it's a player that you know that suddenly out of nowhere he can in training say hey I need to stop for two weeks or whatever he can stop for one month while you have absolutely no idea what happened to him and that's something that in terms of security can be a problem well cheap value I told you 15 million euro can be his value if we want to uh, sign him we have a max of 10 million to pay we already paid three for the loan plus seven he has a salary of 6.5 percentage percentages that he say well Tuto Sport is reporting 65 percent why because Juventus could decide to go for another player maybe Morata the three the Tris Morata one Morata two Morata three that can be a possibility even if it will be quite difficult because he's still under contract with Atletico Madrid we go to the next one Moise Keane Moise Keane well homegrown player and this is super important for Juventus because you can add him in European list without taking a slot for other players it's a player that is still young don't forget that he's born in 2000 if I'm not wrong February 2000 he's a player that has a really great skill it's that ball protection due to his physics he's able to protect that ball and give it to the left to the right but he has also a lot of weaknesses Moise Keane. the behavior is a problem you never know with uh, Moise Keane what kind of day he will have maybe he will wake up and he will be super charged to per turbocharged to give the best that he can or maybe he will be a bit lazy or maybe he will be a bit crazy like the red card he received versus Rama the behavior is a problem not clinical enough that's something that we Tifosi 
are not happy about Moiskin, that a lot of time he has these attempts because he's able to find a space to be in front of the goal, but he's missing sitters. And then the difference that uh, he can't make the difference when he's entering from the bench. It's a player that when he's starting, he gives much more and he's playing much better than when he's entering in the second half, where a lot of time we don't know that he entered. Salary 3.5. Grosso he has a really small salary, 35 million euro is the value that he has, 95% of possibility to stay. Why? Because Moise Keane, we just officially took him over from Everton, he will not have a lot of offers from the Mercado. So that's a problem. We believe that unfortunately, if we could have sacrificed one player, it would have been Moise Keane, but Moise Keane will probably stay. He has a lot of chances to stay. We have uh, three other players and then we finish. Angel Di Maria, Angel Di Maria, well, what can we say about the positives of Angel? Calcio, his calcio, his creativity, his fantasy. He can do this assist, a fantastic, maybe the best left foot on the world. Guys, do we have to speak about Di Maria, the, the positive points? There is something I want to add. I had the honor to speak to Federico Chiesa, to Fagioli, to Locatelli. They all tell me one thing. The player that impressed them the most the one that really impressed them in training, but also in the day-to-day, -day, in the daily life, is Angel Di Maria. Because he's humble and a player that won everything in the world, has still that capacity to be humble, to speak with others, to help others, to be a mentor for the youth like Matthias Sule and so on and so on. So Di Maria, not only the calcio, but also the human side of it. What are the, the, the weaknesses? Because yes, unfortunately, he has weaknesses. Well, the ID card is not green anymore. It's a bit more yellow. The age of Angel Di Maria, 35. He will be 36 next year. And then the fitness. Not that much the injuries. Not that much injury prone, but the, in, the fitness. He can't play two or three games in a row from the first until the 90th minute. So Di Maria is a player that is fantastic, but you have to manage. Well, the salary, 12 million salary at the moment gross but we know it that if he extend that goes lower thanks to the tax law thanks to the decree of law which can be fantastic for Juventus if he stays what about uh, his percentage of stays well 55 percent a bit more positive than negative the family will decide a lot not really the Champions League, the Europa League, but the family will decide. And that has always been a priority for Angel Di Maria. The last two, the youngsters that uh, this year became first team players. We are speaking about Matthias Soule. Creativity, fantastic creative player. The dribbles, the vision, penetration pass, the true balls, free kicks. He has a lot of that beautiful four-star skills in FIFA, for example. He's a uh, young, super young, 19. He will become 20 in April. Homegrown player soon and that's really important because also him will not take any slots in Juventus lists the salary super low because you know it he's your player he's coming from the youth he, he has I believe a salary of less than 1 million euro net at the moment when you renegotiate a, a, a Matthias Soule you have margin to go up which is all beneficial what are the weaknesses of Soule well Physically, we know it, we see it, it's not really ready yet at the moment, super skinny, not always ready to go in duels, even if he cancelled totally Brozovic, but that's something he needs to progress. It's a bit shy and we see it not only in training, but also in front of microphones. It's a shy player that if you want to stay at Juventus and being a starter, you need a bit more of that green tail, being convinced of yourself. And then the 3-5-2. Is he suffering maybe that 3-5-2 formation? And we know if we are listening a bit to the rumors of Alexander staying, about Juventus looking for wingers like a Timo Tiwea and so on and so on, you believe that we can go and continue with that 3-5-2 or 3-4-1 next season where, the, where uh, Mathias Soule can have potentially some problems of formation. Is the loan the best solution for him to play with continuity? Thinking about the Fagioli, for example, that did the same thing and came back much stronger, it can be a possibility for next year. Of course, if Di Maria is staying, maybe he can continue to learn from his mentor. And then the last one is Ealing Junior. What are his strengths? Well, pace. Pace, the vision to be able to cross immediately with his left, with his right. A player that is fat, that is impressing a lot. International exposure, of course, English player. He scored two goals with the under-20. It's a player that soon will integrate the first team of uh, the national team of England if we continue to do like that. A player that 
also has the ability to change the game during the game himself from the bench. Moise Keane, we were saying that he had not that ability. Well, Ealing Jr. is a player that you have on the bench. He enters and he's changing. Also with some dynamism, with some new energy, with some fresh power. What are the weaknesses of Ealing? Well, continuity. We didn't see any continuity and that has been a problem already with the next gen. In the past, that he's not able to give the same performances from game to game to game to game. But also in a game himself, sometimes he has some moments when he's starting the game where he disappears a bit. So continuity of performances in the 90 minutes but also in longer periods will be something he has to work on. And then also, and especially if you work with Max Allegri, the defensive skills where he's working a lot on. Kostic said it, I'm working and I became much better in my defensive skills. If Ealing Jr. wants to be a starter or at least a player with much more minutes from the start from Massimiliano Allegri, he will have to become better in his defensive task. We spoke about all of them. Sporting director, a small intro. Tomorrow or in two days, we'll take care of the midfield. Let me know what you thought about that video, about these analyses. Who is a player that you really say he needs to stay at Juventus? Who is a player that you say, guys, if we can get rid of him, if we can cash in, it's the moment to do it. What about Sule on loan, keeping him? I'm really curious to read you. Don't forget, guys, if you want to support the channel, maximum of likes, subscribe. Grazie, forza. You bet.